my name is uh, Prachi Saraf. Uh, I work for Guavis, which is a Thales company, recently acquired one and a half years back by Thales, which is a French defense group. So uh, I am the agile practice lead for uh, agile transformation at Guavis. And it's really nice to see a lot of familiar faces here, a uh, lot of people who are regulars at the meetup. And I have uh, two people who work with me. Uh, we are part of the same uh, group. So it's great to see uh, Shobhita and Priyanka here. Uh, and I just realized uh, I am actually exhibiting the first Scrum value very well today, which is courage. I have the courage to talk after Gunther and probably still make a point in front of you guys. So I'm going to give it my best shot. And uh, let's see how it goes. So uh, the topic of my discussion, is there a switch that can transcend a manager into a servant leader? And I think uh, Gunther has already uh, set a very beautiful context for me already by uh, emphasizing that the transformation should start with people. So uh, I'll try to build a little more context into that. So here are a few things that uh, I'll be talking about. So why agility demands specific competencies from leaders? Uh, what are the essential traits that these leaders should be exhibiting? And uh, really, right, the managers who have been conditioned in a certain way in a traditional organization, uh, can we humanize with them? Can we empathize with them? Is it really hard and why is it so hard for anybody to change, right? And how not to be a creature of habit? So I'll start uh, with this. So yes, uh, some of the people who have been in a couple of last meetups that I presented in, I like starting the presentation with this slide. I always have these two images. I think that kind of sets the stage and uh, brings us all on the same page as to what Agile really means and why are we doing it, right? So uh, anybody wants to give a shot as to why I have the pit stop image and this uh, traffic island there, and how is it related to Agile? Anybody can help me here? Yeah, they have the purpose of making sure that the, the person is, the driver is back on the track within no time, very, very quickly, right? What else? Correct. Anything? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Correct. So a lot of clarity around what everybody needs to do. Uh, there is no time to think. And there, are, there is no instructor there to tell them what they need to do, right? They have practiced it so well, right? What about the traffic island? Perfect. Yes, yes, perfect, thank you. So yes, uh, agility to me, it means ease of movement, lightness in the movement, clarity while moving, and moving in the positive direction, right? So uh, when we talk about agile transformation, right, we all have different interpretation of, of where the ease is coming from, where the flow is coming from, right? Some of us might argue that uh, in order to get that flow, quickness, nimbleness, ease, I will focus on technical agility as one of my areas because that's the thing that is giving me the notion of speed, ability to get quicker feedback, ability to move forward faster, right? Uh, but the way there are accelerators in the agile transformation, there are breaks, right? It's important to understand what can really slow you down in the agile transformation, right? So uh, I've just put this... Uh, just to, again, bring us all on the same page. Uh, obviously, I'm not here to tell you guys about what is a comparison between traditional and agile approaches, right? But I have highlighted some points. What are the key points here that matter, right? The key decision makers, right? There is no such thing called as key decision maker in agile process. We want the team to develop the competencies for making those decisions what are right for the team. Obviously, management control, the control is through trust collaboration between the uh, team itself. 
moving forward, a uh, couple of references here on what can slow us down. This is the thing that usually slows us down. This is the break part of the agile transformation. We have seen this, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, right? This is from Dr. Alan Ward's presentation on Toyota and the lean practices. So whenever there is a handoff, this is a, this is a reality, unfortunately, that uh, people who have the knowledge do, don't take the action and decisions. People who have the responsibility are not probably giving you feedback on your work. So the handoffs slow us down. Obviously, the structure, the triangle pyramid structure, that slows us down. And we all know, right, uh, what are the essential elements of agile transformation? We need strategy. We need to know where we are going. We need to know at least our true north and the purpose. We need to build our structure around the problems that we are trying to solve. We obviously need to uh, advance in terms of our technology. We need to enable our people so that they can you know, get the feedback faster on what they are trying to do. Yes, the process that can support and enable. But the most important thing is people for me, right? And that's what I'm going to focus on a little bit. So uh, that was the organization context. Talking a little bit about people context, right? When we look at managers in the traditional organizations, there are lots and lots of things that they were not conditioned to do. They were not trained for. They, they were not called out, right? What are some of those things? Lots of things are first time experiences for the managers who are on this journey, right? Uh, do they know how to build a learning organization and a learning culture, for example, right? Uh, refrain from creating heroes, which is definitely a trait of a lot of traditional organizations. Uh, what else, right? The toughest part, give away control, stand back, observe, and let the team perform, right? So do we really condition our leaders and managers so that they develop these capabilities for the teams to perform? So in my opinion, this is one thing that can really slow us down. This can slow us down because if my managers are not reinventing themselves, reinventing their competencies and strengths, it's going to have a viral effect on the teams. On the other hand, if we can leverage this, the same viral effect can be used and leveraged to spread that positivity and create that ease in all the teams that they are working with, right? So uh, when I say managers here, uh, it's all the people facing roles, in fact, in agile transformation. It could be a product owner. It could be a project manager. Now, let's say, you know, most of them take up the scrum master roles, as well as the leaders who bring in those best practices. So all the people facing roles, it's hard. These are the things that they have never done before, right? So uh, quick uh, response from audience. So you know, how many of you have shifted uh, cities for work or for education? Decent amount, right? So uh, how many of uh, your organizations have been through changes? And you know, what kind of change did you have to do? OK, how many of you have learned a new skill, like you know, learned a new technology, because the organization changed the technical direction? Most of you guys, right? So why it is so tough to uh, actually change for building an agile organization? Why it is so tough? We will explore this a little bit. So yes, uh, you know, so should the answer be that we really don't need managers in agile transformation? Let's get rid of them. But no, these are the key people who have contributed to your organization meaningfully, right? So quickly looking at what are the qualities that these managers or leaders bring on the table? What are the aspirations that they have? And why? Why is it a challenge, right? So uh, these people, they've given their 100% to the organization. They have, they have brought the organization to the place where it is today, right? They have contributed to the success of this organization. Uh, they have influence and charisma that can still make people walk along with them. Lots of leaders, I'm sure they are in your organizations too, right? So they have proven their metal, proven their credibility in the current organization. Moving forward, so they do want the best for their organization. They want the organization and their teams to succeed, right? 
and uh, they want to be on the top of their game. They want to grow with the organization. But the moment you spin something off like an agile transformation, we start talking about no hierarchies, flatter structures. So it, it's very, diff, very easy for a person to feel lost or not needed because these are the challenges or the complaints that these uh, managers may have. Was I part of this decision making or it is being pushed down upon me, right? Uh, how do I discover myself in this whole process, in the whole process of change? How do I realign to this organization now? I don't know this organization anymore because it's talking about things that I'm not prepared for, basically, right? So dealing with uncertainty, right? Never got a chance to hone this skill for, the, for any manager, right? So here's the thing, and I'm going to take it back to what uh, you said. So uh, what do organizations do in these cases? Any idea? You know, maybe they will send them for agile training, right? Or most of the times they will assume that uh, people will figure it out, right? It's just a matter of time. So does that work? Like a couple of thoughts from the audience maybe on what typically the organizations do. Do they uh, walk in into the agile transformation with this level of awareness? What do your organizations do about their most important layer of managers? Restructuring, okay. Bring in good agile coach. Great. We'll come to what is a good agile coach, yeah. <laughs> yes. Upskilling, okay, that's an interesting one, yeah. So I'll respond only to that. I think we know skills which are technical or functional in nature. One blind spot that the organization most of the times has is uh, in agile transformation is that it's definitely not the technical or functional skill that you're looking for. It's the cognitive, social, sort of self-adaptive skill that this person or these leaders need to build, right? Anything else? Correct. Perfect. And I'll extend it. Are they actually ready for it? Right? Yeah? Uh, I think you got a very good point that kind of sets the uh, context for my next uh, point. What's wrong with you? Yeah, okay. So uh, you've seen something like this uh, again in the context of turn the ship around. So we have created an organization we and when we have told the leaders, you take all the decisions, you be authoritative. You build compliance in your people. And we have told our people that uh, he's your boss, right? You know, don't think he'll do all the thinking for you. He'll take all the decisions for you. Just implement. And we think we are helping our people to focus by doing this, right? So the manager, we want the person to be a creature of habit. And we want the team to, it's OK to build that atrophy. I have probably retarded a lot of abilities in my people because I always ask them, someone else will decide the what, why, how, most of the times even the how, right? So this is the situation that I have ended up creating because of my needs of a traditional organization. But when I move to agile transformation, is this going to help me? No, this is going to slow me down, right? So yes, so we want the leaders now suddenly to be able to engage their people, enable their people, involve them, build the trust. And we want our teams to think, apply themselves, solve your own problems. And that's how, you know, move towards a high performing team. So this is the, uh, this is the tussle that's happening in your teams and managers. And mostly, yes, we may have got an agile coach, we might have sent them for training, or most of the time we have just assumed that it's all going to fall in place. But 
that hardly ever ever happens right okay so this is my favorite quote and uh, this kind of is the only theme that i want to emphasize on today so so bill o'brien favorite uh, because of the reason he says the success of an intervention depends on the internal condition of the intervener right so whether we like it or not whether a manager knows or not he is an intervener in this agile transformation journey whether he chooses for it to, or not right because if i have a buy in and alignment of the layer of leaders or managers i have solved half of the problems of the transformation right but again so uh, what am i doing to actually assess or uh, help or create that support structure for my layer of managers so that they can further propagate uh, the positivity and you know they can make agile transformation a success so two things that come to my mind over here so most of the times it, leadership in uh, traditional organizations is associated with heroism right you know there is a huge customer escalation or somebody lost some data on some server and whoever can you know uh, come and be the firefighter becomes the hero and we feel that that's the leadership that he has already exhibited because he got the organization out of out of trouble really saved the organization right so that's how we think of leadership but when we talk about uh, building organizations that are uh, capable of reshaping their own future we also need leadership where self generation is emphasized where the ability to recreate the future is emphasized right but uh, this is the aspect that we do not pay much attention to in agile transformation right so and the other thing uh, other important thing here so unless uh, i have worked with this intervener uh, unless i have invested in this person uh, layer of managers to actually uh, make the magic happen so i al also honestly believe that uh, agile coaches be it for technical agility for or just the introduction to process i think we are trying to somewhere cover the deficit or a gap in our leaders right we shouldn't probably need a technical coach or uh, leadership or an agile coach because uh, we are trying to uh, create the uh, buffer or create that cushion for these leaders to rise up right but if they actually get it right it's going to really speed up and fasten and move your agile transformation in the right direction okay so a couple of examples before i come to my uh, last slide so i'm sure you must have seen typical uh, profiles of uh, managers in the middle of transformation right so a uh, super leader i'm sure you must have also seen the agile game where there is a retrospective about super leaders right so similarly uh, on those lines so there is a super leader i want to do it all i want to be everywhere because i know it right so yes personally this person can be wonderful gracious person really wants to help people nothing wrong with that right right ready to walk the extra mile and make things happen so what's the professional identity that this person builds in the organization amazingly knowledgeable can solve any technical issue right the organization helps this identity that the person wants to create by rewarding the person for this behavior but is this going to work in the agile transform uh, as the organization moves into you know on the agile journey so the habitual structure of this person always looks at any opportunity as as the opportunity to help and wants to make the problems disappear but what is the effect that it end up ends up having on people right it is retarding people's ability to think not giving them that exposure to problem solving and uh the person just doesn't know that there is other way to responding to situation right feature of habit yeah another example so uh this person again extremely brilliant extremely likable hard working ambitious right so what is the professional identity that this person ends up building is uh very very driven competitive uh the downside of here is this person tends to micromanage again 
doesn't trust others and instead of uh, in this zeal of wanting to be there and help and wanting to be there just to make sure that everything is under control uh, ends up getting pulled off from his or her own uh, work stack right so again uh, this is this is my favorite line it's based on some of the uh, uh, works and publications by Sri Aurobindo so uh, he always talks about moving from one level of consciousness to the next right so habit is important for us right habit helps us build our identity that's why we fall in love with our habits okay but in agile context and in order to move to the next level of consciousness the same habit which was our strength has become the bar it's not allowing us to the, move to the next level of consciousness next level of awareness right so uh, the decision that an agile leader now has to make is am i going to operate by my own conditioned self of you know pray uh, am i going to be you know falling into my habit trap or am i going to be able to access my own resourcefulness my own self generative capability you know and access my own inner wisdom here right so yes uh, so hence uh, referring to some of the things uh, in the great uh, work of some people which is in the area of developmental coaching uh, so you know we can list like 15 20 uh, competencies of uh, agile leaders and managers but uh, there is a reference of meta competencies of agile leaders very simple uh, learning agility emotional quotient self awareness and the most important ability is presence okay can i operate from the space of now to create a future okay very simple to understand but very di very difficult to practice same like scrum very simple to understand but very difficult to apply if you don't do it right right so uh, yes so in traditional performance driven coaching what happens is uh, the pressure of uh, reaching those performance goal is much more than the emphasis on learning and if this is deeply routed in my own habits then i'm never going to be able to break the loop of habits and truly create a sustainable change in myself right here we are talking about a leader and setting an expectation with the leader that you have to create a fail safe environment for your team right but does the person has a person become self organized and self aware enough to be able to help the team right so here the developmental coaching can actually create that space the coach can actually hold that space for uh, the person where the person can access the inner wisdom access the self generative capability that we all are born with it's just that on the way we fall in love with our habits so much that we forget that we are able capable of rediscovering ourselves so the last slide here uh so this is the typical habit loop that we all all consciously or you know not aware of it a lot of times but this is what we do right uh whenever there is an evolving situation whenever there is any trigger we always respond based on our habits and our conditioning right why because we interpret things around us to actually reinforce our own identity that's what we want to do because we know that that gives rewards that gives us satisfaction that makes us feel wanted and needed right and this is also true in any organization con uh, context as much as it is true in any personal context right so uh, we want to act so that we can justify our actions and we can map it back to our habit and our strengths because we like operating by our strengths it has always given us results that's the basic reason for it but now this is something that i would invite you all to consider and uh, to probably observe and try so in any situation instead of going into our unconscious default of uh, responding from the space of comfort and habit we should self observe okay this is these are the competencies or these are the things that one has to be either coached on or they have to be developed consciously so why because most of us are not capable of even we are not even aware of our habits right 
I wish we could have uh, had those 10 extra minutes. We could have probably done a little bit of self-awareness, uh, quick exercise here. But yes, you know, first of all, can we observe now ourselves in this situation, right? A self-observation can lead to a realization and that realization itself is an aha moment, right, you know. That realization moment that yes, I, I was about to go off on my typical habitual way, but here is a realization that leads to a choice. Do I really want to operate in this way, okay? So if we, uh, if we could have gone back to the two examples, uh, whenever there is a need, whenever there is a situation, let's say in the field where a problem solver who's now an agile leader feels tempted to actually go and solve the problem, you know, the person has been conditioned to do that. But can that person pause over there? Can the person pause and observe as to what is this urge that the person